And welcome everybody, episode 22 talks for the people. We got a new look, we cleaned some stuff up. It's the same, but different. I think it looks a little bit better. Anyway, this week, Cody has informed us he's got a whole cavalcade of Burns My Biscuits. We're gonna hear from Steven as well. Uh, I've got a new segment that we're gonna start off with something that excited me this past week. It's not a Burns My Biscuits. We're gonna call it Butters My Biscuits because it's just so damn delicious. Then in later, Later on in the show, we're going to hear about Cody's uh, trip to Indiana, and we're going to go over some of our bucket list uh, goals in life. How y'all guys doing this week? Doing fantastic, doing? man. It's yep, 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 starting yep. to cool off, and it's going to heat back up. So that sucks. Yep, it's not going to last long, <laughs> yeah. but I'm doing good. It's going to suck, though. Friday's supposed to be like in the high 20s. Screw that. Mm, Cody's favorite. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Diamond cutting nipples all day. Yes. No. Oh, hey, is... well, I'm opening a lemonade stand. <laughs> <laughs> milk, milk, lemonade around the corner, fudge is made. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's enough of that nonsense. Yeah. Cody, Cody, what's what's burning your biscuits this week? Oh my gosh. So I picked up so many <laughs> going to Indiana. But I'm gonna start with one that deals with music. Uh, what burns my biscuits is when they play a song on the radio and it's not even a long song and they uh shorten it down. For, for radio editing that pisses me off yeah and my but the best example i can give you is ram jams black betty thank god man i thought you you had this on here because you didn't like the song i was about to have to disown you no 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 i love the song but when they play it on the radio they cut out the guitar solo i don't know who the fuck needs guitar solos I do. <laughs> no, I'm so full of shit. I do too. I enjoy them. I'm, no, and it's, I it's, actually, like it's a two minute solo. It's, I mean, they make, they cut out like 45 seconds of the song. Well, Alan's that's, actually that's more of a bass soloist. So um, he thinks the guitar solos are kind of good. Yeah. Hey, I'll put, <laughs> I'll put Metallica's Orion up against any guitar solo. Oh, my. No, that's like the only example I've got, but <laughs> it was a badass solo. Yeah, it, it's just it's aggravating that they they cut it out and and what's sad is people if people's never heard the full version, they don't even know there's a guitar solo in that song. Oh, I I agree. No, I mean it's just another reason for people to I mean, and radio's not even live anymore. I mean, you got a handful of local stations that might be live, but all your major radio stations are broadcast from either Los Angeles or New York on iHeartRadio. Just listen to what you want to listen to. Get you a Spotify subscription or use iTunes Music. I mean, I, I have not listened to music on the radio probably 10 years. Yeah, probably for the best. I feel the radio has been ruined with modern crap. Yeah. yeah, I think I was going home or going to, I had a doctor's appointment Monday night. So I was headed there and heard it on the radio and I knew they were going to cut it off. And I was like, you know what? To hell with y'all. So I turned the radio off and I pulled it up on my phone. And I put it on repeat and I, I listened about 10 times in a row, <laughs> the full, the full <laughs> version, just so I could hear the guitar solo. <laughs> Hey, um, don't, don't blame me, man. So we did a lot of driving this weekend. Uh, it's eight hours up there and eight hours back, and uh, ran into a lot of blind spot drivers. That burns my biscuits. They they intentionally drive right in your blind spot, and it just it drives me insane. Like either speed up and pass me. Or, or just stay back. No, I agree. Uh, That's why I'm I'm glad my, my vehicle has that new 
blind spot detection on it, like that's a lifesaver. Like there's probably already because people do it on sixty five as well. I mean, there would have been several near misses without that stuff on my car already. I hate people that do. That. I know you probably have more burns my biscuits, but if you don't mind, I'm gonna hop in real quick because I got something that has something similar to do with that. All right. So. I encountered this today and it burns me up. So three lanes on the interstate and there's an accident. So all three lanes are stopped and these expletives want to drive on the median or on the side, on the side, on both sides to go around it. I'm like, yo, we're all stuck in the same traffic. Calm your tits. Okay. <laughs> Stop trying to go around on the median. That's technically illegal. If a cop catches you, you get a ticket. I wish anytime there's an accident, they get one extra cop there to watch that. That way, when people do it, they can ticket the fire out of them. It drives me up the wall. And typically, if I see that happening and I'm on one of the outside lanes, I pull half in the lane and then half on the median, too. That way, if they're going to drive on the outside, they're going to have to get in the mud to get over. That happened to I, me. Same, ex same exact thing uh, Monday or had to have been Monday. Yeah, the, whatever day I took... It took me two hours to get home. That's that's what was going on. And so many people just came, like five or six cars came. I'm like, you realize you're just making this worse for everybody else. Right? I mean, and I, I almost did what you did. Absolutely. And I, do, I do it every time, especially, especially the ones where you see a sign that has the, the arrow saying, get over this lane's closing. And some dickhead is going to ride that lane all the way until he's running over cones before he gets over. And I'm like, yeah, well, you know what? You can suck my butt. You're not getting over. <laughs> <laughs> not going to happen, my man. Hey, what, what I like is when they uh, they pull out like that and then they, had, they get stopped up there somewhere. Like nobody will let them in. Maybe they're up against a guardrail. And yeah. here comes the emergency vehicles. That's supposed yeah. to be using the shoulder, and they get right. stuck behind that guy, and then that guy's like, "I'm a dick. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Justice literally is keeping this ambulance from getting to the guy to the wreck." <laughs> yeah. Justice is served. Right. Yeah, but chances was... are, if he's doing that anyway, he probably doesn't care about that. That ambulance probably isn't not. getting there. He's just a jerk. <laughs> he's just a jerk. So something else I noticed is that, that the first time I ever noticed this was in Atlanta a couple years ago. But I ran into this again in, in Indiana. For some reason, there are places where there's only one entrance and one exit into a uh, into or out of like a, a parking lot. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy because if you miss the entrance, like I'm used to in Birmingham or Coleman or whatever, if you miss, there's usually like at least two ways to get into somewhere. Right. So if you miss the first one, you just go on and get in the second one. Not in Indiana. <laughs> you, go, you miss that entrance. You got to drive the whole block all the way around <laughs> no. to, get, to get in. There's no other way in and no other way out. And I had that same problem in Atlanta. And that burns my biscuits. Like that seems like a fire marshal alert. Yeah. Like, right. These people should be able to have more than one point of egress. Yeah. No kidding. <laughs> I don't know if y'all ever ran into that before or not, but I'm, that's frustrating. You'll know it, it too. Cause you'll you'll miss it and be like, "Oh well, I can, I can get in right up here." No, <laughs> you <laughs> well you can like it'll be a, an entrance, but it's to the next parking lot, and there's like a huge median, or a or it's on a different level, so you you yeah. can't get over there. <laughs> that is just one more reason why I'm excited to get my Jeep. <laughs> if I pass that baby up, I'm getting in the next parking lot and I'm hopping over something to get in the parking lot I want to be in. <laughs> I do miss my truck. I used to go uh <laughs> if if the if you couldn't get into the uh the driveway into somewhere, you just go up on the curb and just go over the curb. Like you own the place. <laughs> do but what not you my gotta car. do. I'll, I'll tear something up. <laughs> That's all the burns I got this week so far. Alan, do you have any? No, not any burns. You can go ahead. All right, I have one. Um, and I'm sure everybody on the planet 
with the exception of probably this probably profiling, but it, with the exception of Indian people can relate to this. And it's the extended warranties. And it's not the fact that they call. That's not what burned me up because I'm used to them by now. I'm almost numb to the fact that they come. What burns me up is that every single one opens up with, this is your final notice. Yo, my final notice was 250,000 calls ago. <laughs> Why are you still giving me final notices? I've had my final notice. Obviously, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> like, sure, call back. But don't tell me it's my final notice. In fact, you know what? I wish it would be against the law. I'm sure it is against the law to, to hassle people like that already, but it's against the law not to number the number of times you've called them. So if they make it a law, you know, two years from now, I should get a call when I pick up, hello, this is your 250,675th time of a final notice. <laughs> like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's, it drives me up the wall that that's what they open with. This is your final notice. Wow. <laughs> yeah no it, it gets on it's become a meme of itself at this point and they know what's going on they do it every time i mean it's it's robot callers they pick up the phone after you've said hello they're not sitting there dialing well but, i i i can't appreciate the uh the the covid uh caller memes because somebody i remember somebody posted it's like hey I wonder if those call centers are all right because I haven't heard about my extended warranty in a while. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, so this week, we uh, have got a new segment. I don't know if it quite fits in with Burns, but it is the opposite of a burn. So we're dubbing this new segment Butters My Biscuits because it's just oh so delicious and makes you happy. And what makes me happy is discovering new music. And especially when this new music is tied into a movie that has an amazing cast to it. And honestly, when I tell y'all who is in this cast, y'all will understand why me being the person that I am, I was, I'm embarrassed that I did not know about this movie. This movie is three years old. Like, I'm embarrassed that I did not know about this. Uh, the movie that I saw last week after we recorded this uh, is called American Satan. The, uh, the IMDb description for this movie, the little blurb, is a hungry young rock band drops out of college and moves to Los Angeles' Sunset Strip to chase after their dreams. However, they soon catch the dangerous attention of a sinister stranger. So, what this movie is about is, this band is, they've been a band for like two or three years, or calling themselves a band, but like, the lead singer and one of the guitarists lives in Ohio. Uh, the manager of the band and the other guitarist lives in England. And the guys that are in England are go out one night to catch a band playing uh, to try and steal their drummer. And that band is from Australia. So the drummers, they were trying to find a drummer for their band, but you've got two members in England, two members in the U.S. They get a drummer from Australia. They finally convince the drummer to join them by, I mean, not telling whole truths about how far along the band is or living situations out in Los Angeles. Uh, but they do make it out to Los Angeles and they hold auditions and they find a bass player out there. And they start hitting the ground running to try and make it as a rock band in Los Angeles. And as you can imagine, there's probably literally thousands of bands all trying to do the same thing. Uh, try to be spoiler free with this because I want everybody to go see this movie. It's it's an amazing movie. But uh, so they go to uh, 
the whiskey, whiskey a go go, right there on Sunset Strip, and they actually land a gig, but it's a it's a pay to play, typical for that part of town, and they tell them you go sell this many tickets, you've got a show in six weeks. On their way out, they bump into this guy, and he starts telling them, "Well, I've helped." A lot of bands make it big, and he starts naming off, like, the Rolling Stones and, like, all these people, and you start putting these weird things together, and without getting too far into spoiler territory, this guy that's talking to him is the Sinister Stranger. Great movie, but uh, look at look at this cast. Uh, you have Andy Beersack from Black Veil Brides, uh... Now, a fun fact about this, I did some research because I listened to Black Veil Brides and I didn't, I thought e either Andy is more talented than I thought he was or that's not Andy singing. <laughs> and turns out when the movie was created, Black Veil Brides was not on Sumerian Records who funded this film and he was not allowed to use his voice in the movie. Because him and his band was under a record contract with another label. So they have a guy named Remington Leaf from the band Pele Royale is the singing voice. But you've got Andy you've got Andy Beersack in the movie from Black Bell Brides. You've got Ben Bruce, the guitarist from Asking Alexandria, uh, in the movie. you and here's where the fun ones here's where the fun ones start. You've got uh Boo Boo Stewart who a lot of our audience, if you're a Disney fan, may know as Jay from Disney's Descendants. He's one of the guitarists in the band. Uh, John Bradley plays Ricky, the band's manager, which y'all may know as Sam from Game of Thrones. He's in the movie. Uh, Mark Boone Jr. is in the movie, which you his most notable role was probably in Sons of Anarchy, but he was also in Batman Begins and a long list of horror movies. Uh, Denise Richards is in the movie, and let's be honest, she needs no introduction. <laughs> uh, Malcolm McDowell is in the movie, and while the name may not sound familiar to you right off the bat, he's that guy you're like, he's been in something else I've seen. He's been in, he's he's that actor. He's been in almost everything. Uh, but the movie that most people, that put him on the map, in my opinion, is A Clockwork Orange. Uh, Goldberg is in there. He ends up playing the band's like enforcer, like stage manager, uh, Goldberg from WWE, WCW, you know, the Adam Sandler movies and all that. Uh, and then a fun little cameo that's in the movie is, uh, Drake Bell is in it from Drake and Josh. <laughs> even, nice. even he's in it. He's playing like the lead singer of a, uh, another band that's trying to, to get them gone. But the other thing that caught me, I mean, this whole movie is 100% up my alley. But the one thing that caught me off guard is you watch a lot of these bands, these movies about bands, and the soundtrack is just very cookie cutter. It's very plain. It's nothing really exciting. This, I have found a new band, and it is a fictional band that doesn't exist. I will never get to see on tour. I will never get to see them live. This band doesn't exist. But if you're interested, uh, after you watch the movie, uh, if you search for The Relentless or American Satan on Spotify, there's a whole album. Their whole album that they're recording during the movie is available to listen to on spotify and if you're uh interested in hearing any of the music i will i will list two of the they even did two whole music videos i'll list two music videos below in the comments for you to uh for you to check them out my personal favorite is the uh song let him burn excellent excellent song very well written uh it's currently my favorite album probably uh by a band that doesn't fucking exist in real life. <laughs> but anyway, that's I just wanted to let y'all know about that. And if you do watch the movie 
and you like it, they just now released an eight-part TV series, season one of Paradise City. Uh, if you've been hearing about this, it's very popular. It's number one on every single platform it's been released on right now across all genres. I mean, don't care what genre. You just hit top ten on every platform that this TV show is released on, and it's number one. So... If you're already interested in watching Paradise City, make sure you watch American Satan first. The TV show picks up like one year after the movie. And if you try to jump into the movie, the TV show without watching the movie, you're not going to know what the hell's going on. You're not going to want, you're not going to know, wow, this is happening. Like the TV show assumes you have seen the movie. All right. But, uh, it's definitely worth a watch. I recommend it to everybody who is a fan of rock music and movies. Excellent movie. But we'll go ahead and move on from that. And Stephen, I think you uh, this was yours, so we'll let you head this one up. Bucket All right. List, bucket list goals. So uh, shout out to my brother, Jock. Um, Good dude. Me and him were having the conversation the other day about bucket list goals. And of course, most of the time people think, you know, bucket list goals aren't really something you do until you get to retirement. So you don't really thought, think about keeping a bucket list goal um, until, you know, you're in your 50s or 60s leading up until 65 when you retire, right? Well, I don't know why. I'm weird. I'm different. But I've had a bucket list goal since I was 20. And I might add to it, I might take off of it, but uh, things like running a marathon, doing a triathlon, um, those, those were two things on my bucket list, bucket list um, things that I really wanted to do sometime in my life. Not something I wanted to form a habit of, but something I was like, you know, it'd be, it would be cool to say I've done it in my lifetime. So um, I, I completed those already, which I'm, I'm very happy with. But at the same time, you know, uh, my, my buddy, me and him were talking about it, and I, he didn't have one. He didn't, he didn't know what, what awesome things he would like to experience in his life, you know? So, I mean, uh, of course, before I get started on, you know, the, the number one thing on my list, you know, I, I would like to inspire everybody out there, choose three things you'd like to do. Would you like to travel to Japan? Would you like to travel uh, to Australia? Would you like to um, go swimming with the sharks like on Shark Week? You know, anything of that nature. You know, go out and, and find neat things that you think you'd be brave enough to try to do. Climb Everest. I mean, heck. And set a goal to do it. You know, if it takes a little bit of money, save up for it. You know, you got – I mean, I'm 32. So, I mean, technically I got another – 30 or 40 years before I have to worry about, you know, so I could save up for 30, 40 years and get my financials in, in place to do these things. So I highly inspire everybody to do it. You know, think of things you want to do and whatnot, you know, make your life a story worth telling, you know, I mean, it, it doesn't have to be a story worth telling for everybody. Just think of it this way. You don't have to impress anybody or share this with anybody. But it's a story worth telling in the aspect that if you were to hear it about yourself, you would be like, now that was cool. Um, so that being said, my, my number one item on the list, and uh, if, if you haven't figured it out by now, I am a huge Disney fan. Huge, huge, huge Disney fan. So one of my bucket list goals, uh, which will most likely not happen until I retire, is I want to take like a month long or a month and a half long trip around the world and visit every Disney location there is. So if, if you're not familiar with it, the, the route would go something along the lines of, so I would go down to Orlando and I would go to Walt Disney World and then I would fly to California to go to the Disneyland in California. And then I would fly to Honolulu, Hawaii because they have a Disney resort in Honolulu. And then from there I would fly to Japan because they have a, a, a um, Disney Park in Japan, and they have one in Shanghai, China, and then one in, there's another one in China, Hong Kong, Shanghai and Hong Kong, so I'd go from one to the next, and then there's a Euro Disney, I, I'm pretty sure it's in France, and then of course after that I'd fly home, 
but that, that would kind of fix a couple of things on my bucket list. So that's the only reason I brought that one up in particular, because I have four or five items on the list, but I, I want to visit Japan and there's a Disney in Japan. So kill two birds with one stone kind of accomplishing this. I would love to go see some landmarks like the Great Wall of China. I mean, things like that. The um, uh, There's a, a, a warrior's temple in China as well that's got thousands, tens of thousands of stone warriors that are hand carved and they all have unique individual faces. It's a tomb that was built for a Chinese emperor and they're still intact. We're talking hundreds of years old and you're talking about seven, eight foot stone warriors, each one tens of thousands with a different face. I mean, things like that are just really neat. And, you know, I, I would like to say that I visited it and, and things like that. So, I mean, I, I would, I'm curious to see, you know, if, if y'all have anything on your bucket list, so to speak, or, I mean, I know Alan would, would love to go, well, I'll let him tell it. Um, he's got a, maybe a little Euro trip he might be planning yeah. on whatnot, but it'd be, it'd be, it's neat to hear everybody's ideas, you know, bounce off of. I mean, heck, I'll tell you this, my bucket list goals are not reserved only for me. If I have a couple of friends uh, you know, if my wife has a couple of friends and we're like, you know, what, we'd all like to visit Japan group trip. We all get our bucket list gold, gold done and we have a fun time as a, a group doing it. So, you know, I'm interested to hear what y'all got. And honestly, if, if it, when you, as our to for our viewers, if you're watching, comment, what's your bucket list goal? Give us some ideas. Give others ideas of what you would like to do. You think it'd be really neat. Absolutely. Uh I'll go ahead and go next. My two of my biggest bucket list goals. Uh, first one, as you hinted at, is uh, I've always wanted to go visit England, and I'm a music lover. I want to go to Download Festival. Uh, three days of rock and metal across God knows how many stages at this point, but the main stage. Is just insane. You're talking 70,000 people. And when you get a, a heavier band headlining, I mean, you got a 70,000 person mosh pit just jumping. And it looks like water flowing because it's just so fluid. I'm telling you, going to, uh, going to England and going to Download Festival in the, during the summer, it's usually around June, July. Uh, that's that's one of my my biggest ones. Uh, my other one, my other one is a lot probably a lot more achievable, and it and it can be slow played, but I want to go see every single NHL arena. That'd be cool. I've currently been to one. <laughs> I've I've seen that now. Technically, it's two. But one of the two doesn't exist anymore, so I can't count Atlanta anymore. But I have been numerous times to see the Nashville Predators play. Uh, and next year, it's going to be 32 teams. Well, end of this year. Next next season, the Seattle Kraken are being added. Uh, two, three years ago, they added the uh, Vegas Golden Knights. So, I mean, I could take a trip to Vegas. See the hockey game at T-Mobile Arena. But yeah, I just want to go see every I want to see every single NHL arena. That's that's my other big bucket list goal. And that's one that you could ship away at. I mean, you plan like just a ro summer road trip one year. Oh, well, I guess it wouldn't be summer. I mean, I'm wanting to watch hockey, but uh early spring playoffs, yeah. Make it more expensive on myself. Let's do that. And uh, just catch I want to see every NHL arena. I want to go to a hockey game at every NHL arena. Cool, cool. I, I wouldn't mind going to the uh, all the SEC football stadiums. I've been to four, but we got fourteen, so I have I have ten more to go. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind seeing a lot of the uh, baseball stadiums. Like, I'd like to go see. Well, of course, Yankees have got a new stadium now, but I'd like to go see the the Red Sox and uh, Chicago Cubs and their stadium and stuff like that. Like that would be. I saw the Texas Rangers ballpark a few years ago when I was in Dallas, 
or at least I saw it from outside. But they they just built a brand new one. Let me ask you this: uh, with wanting to see like all the baseball arenas, does it uh like deep down in the back of your your soul make you a little bit upset that you'll never see like the proper Yankee Stadium? Uh, I mean, no, I'm not I'm not that big of a fan of it, but. I, I mean, there was just it. there was like so much history. Like for me, with the hockey thing, Absolutely. like uh, with the hockey thing, like Detroit Red Wings used to play in Joe Lewis Arena. That was a storied, historic arena. I, I, I hate that I'm never going to get to see a hockey game in Joe Lewis Arena. They're playing in. I just looked it up. Little Caesars Arena. Now. <laughs> it's a new new arena they built, but Joe Lewis Arena is gone. I mean, the Igloo uh, in Pittsburgh. I mean, they're now playing in PPG Paints Arena. I mean, there's several iconic ones that are gone. Well, and like, uh, you know, I'm a pretty good pretty good Braves fan, Atlanta Braves fan, and I, I didn't even get to see a game in uh, T- Turner Field. No, I actually got to, I so, got to go to Turner Field. But the first Brave get, Braves game I ever get to go to, I guess, will be in SunTrust Park. But anyway, that's uh, I, I, w- I would like to do that. But my first one I had was, and this, this is this is gonna be hard to do because I think someone's gonna have to push me out of the plane. But I would <laughs> like to skydive. Yep, oh, you won't catch me with you. Hey, <laughs> we're taking him. I don't I'll have pull, the, I, I, I will pull podcast. both of y'all out. We're doing a podcast episode. And live I, stream. I, live I, stream. I, I will pull both of y'all out. I, <laughs> two things I will never do is skydiving and bungee jumping. I have a slight fear of heights, so jumping out of a plane is not practical for me. <laughs> fun, fun fact. Most people do not honestly have a fear of heights. They have a fear of falling. Well, if I'm falling, <laughs> uh, no, I think once I got out of the plane, it would, I would enjoy it, the hell out of it. Here's my but thing. getting me to jump out of a perfectly good airplane is going to be tough. Look, they better, I would, they better pack a lunch. Here's my thing when it comes to skydiving. It's too expensive for how long it lasts for a cheapskate like me. If somebody came, if somebody knocked on my door tomorrow afternoon and said, hey, your trip's paid for, you're going skydiving Saturday. Yeah, like I'm excited. I'll be there with bells on. I'll be there an hour early, ready to go. Let's go, man. Let's, let's, let's go. They're like, but if you said, hey, I'm going skydiving. You want to go with me? Uh, how much does it cost? Said, yeah, it's like $250, $300. Nah, I'm good, man. You have a you have a fun trip, you know. I'm, I I just I the the cost to time ratio I can't justify. I'm not scared yeah. to do it. I want to do it, but yeah, it is expensive. Uh, I mean, I guess if you count in the time that you know, I think it's a few. By the time you get there, it's a few hours before you even get up in the plane. Like you, they show you how to pack your your uh shit parachute and you know they had to go over all this stuff and stuff like that so it's like a now steven you wouldn't do any kind of bungee jumping all that this so, maybe a little better but yeah the thrill wise you're not getting <laughs> i i have done the slingshot down at the beach but what about over bungee jumping over an airbag like at the beach i wouldn't do it I wouldn't do it. I, I just, I, I have, and this, this goes like, so I'll put it this way. Like I can watch Grey's Anatomy and, you know, actual live doctor's operations where somebody's guts is all over the table and, uh, you know, they're all bleeding out and just, I, I can handle guts, but watching two guys arm wrestle and one of their arms snaps in half while they're doing it, it makes me cringe. And it's because I've seen you know, soccer players and football players and guys arm wrestling break things off of the simplest things. I mean, uh, guys that break a leg after jumping up and landing, it makes me cringe. 
and to go along with that, I have seen way too many videos where Dildo Baggins is hopping off a bridge with a fucking bungee cord and that bitch snaps and splats the only sound it makes after that. I, <laughs> I am reliant on other equipment for my life safety. Other equipment I've probably never seen before, five minutes before I do it. Don't you uh, so, do that every day in your car? Huh? Don't you do that every day in your car? I do, but I have more control over my car than I do free falling. You don't have control over that seatbelt if you're in a wreck. I don't, but I have control. You don't have control over the airbag. I have multiple angles of control. I can either steer out of the way. I can hit the brakes. I can use the e-brake. I can roll out my window, jump out of the damn window. Either way. <laughs> I just, when you're falling out of a plane, you got one option. If you pull that chute and that motherfucker don't come out, your option's gone. If you jump off a bungee cord and that thing snaps, you ain't got no other option. Look at it this way. <laughs> at least you won't feel it. Oh, yeah. My butthole will be inverted by the time I hit the ground. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Wait, Hold is on. it not already inverted? Is, it, is your butthole not inverted right now? <laughs> no, I'm talking about it'll be like caved in like, like a vortex. It'll be clenched so tight. My cheeks will be sucked into my butt. <laughs> I was about to say my butthole's inverted right now, but that's the way it's supposed to be. I'd be worried if you were protruding. I mean, I mean, <laughs> it's just back and then legs. Yeah, I don't have a prolapse. I mean, super inverted. <laughs> oh, I'd I'd come so much. I, I would jump out of a plane a hundred times before I would bungee jump. So and. And let, let me let me put it this way too. So you you know I have this mentality about I don't have any control, right? I, I always like to have a backup. In my opinion, skydiving and bungee jumping, you don't have a backup. But I have no problem getting on a plane. I have no problem looking out a window. And I tell you why, because I got at least one option, and that's putting a parachute on and hop my ass out that plane if I need to, right? So, I mean, as long as the option's there. Now, once the option's there and used, I mean, I'm kind of SOL if the parachute doesn't come. But as long as I have a second option, I have another way to fix a problem. I just don't feel you have that if you're parachuting and bungee jumping. You have two chutes. Yeah. <laughs> you got an emergency chute. Yeah, knowing me, I it don't want to always comes my, my, my extra chute with rocks. <laughs> my first and, one and your tandem. Coming out of you're not going to jump. You're not going to jump solo. You're going to jump tandem. So at least you'll die with somebody. Yeah, what is it? I mean, it's a minimum of what? It's five to 10 jumps tandem. When I, I think the first well, even three, let you. it's like jump. 500 hours of jumping. Before yeah, I was going to go say, solo. and I think the first five or yeah, six, it's crazy. Strap to a professional. I don't think you can solo jump your first couple of times. You have to be strapped to somebody. Right. So you y'all seen the guy? Him? Y'all seen the video of the guy that free jumps, no parachute? Oh yeah, he'll throw it out of the plane and then try and catch it in the air. No, I'm talking about this guy lands in a trampoline, humongous trampoline, but he lands in this trampoline uh, net thing. I don't free I don't, fall from a skydive, but no parachute. I mean, he's just like. Psh, I have to see this because I right. still feel at that speed you break your legs even on a trampoline. Uh, they got it's like a. I don't. I mean, I I'd, I'd have to show you the video. Okay. It, it's pretty cool. Steven, got a question for you. I'm listening. What if me and Cody paid for you to go skydiving, and you got there, and the person you're tandeming with, your professional, is Lacey Chambert. Are you going to go skydiving? Now, wait a minute. For, for the viewers, who who is that? She's most famous for our viewers right now. Probably you know her from Mean Girls, Gretchen Wieners. Okay. I know her from Lost in Space. That was my high school sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> she just didn't know it. <laughs> <laughs> am, I, am I the parachute or in the front? <laughs> no, you, she's strapped behind you. <laughs> so you don't even have to worry about getting embarrassed. 
She's behind you. You're not gonna poke her in the She's rear. She's holding you. It it would it would be it would be a stretch. I mean, it would it would take a little bit. You know, I am I would like to believe I'm an adventurer, right? So hypothetically speaking, y'all commit and y'all are like, we're going skydiving. We're gonna take our our first twenty jumps with somebody and whatnot. I might hop on a plane for the first five just to see and then get y'all's reactions, see how the jumping off the plane feels, get the atmosphere, and then maybe after the fifth one, be like, you know what? <sighs> Let me give it a try. But it, it would it would take some it, – it's not something I could commit to and be like, all right, I'm buying tickets right now. Let's go. It's, I, I, I'm not comfortable with that at all. <laughs> all right. So if we ever decide to do something similar to the Impractical Jokers – Y'all, y'all seen the show, right? Yes. I know Alan has. So that is going to be Stephen's punishment. For the episode he loses, we're going to make him skydive because you can't turn down a punishment. <laughs> well, I would do everything you have to do. That. So, Look. Well, you don't know what the punishment is until we give it to you. Look, they yeah, have they have the benefit of being on TV and things that can air. If we were to do. And impractical jokers between us three, I'm scared. <laughs> like our punishments are things that could potentially get us killed. No, no, I mean I honestly I would make I would make um business cards with pictures of your butthole and you would have to hand them out to people and say, Hey, come, visit my fans only page. <laughs> <laughs> I would do that. <laughs> 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 at the mall <laughs> uh, as long as it's not the Galleria uh, <laughs> so we got off of quite a tangent there so okay. the, uh, the second thing on my bucket list would be <laughs> I would like to go back to Germany uh, I was born over there my dad was stationed in the army there in the 80s and uh, you know, we moved back when I was a couple months old or whatever so I, I don't remember any of it but I'd like to go back and see where I was born, see the town we were, we lived in, see the base, uh, just do some sightseeing. You know what? I, I'm being 100% serious right now. No joke. Within the next five years, let's seriously start planning a trip, but it has to be planned around Oktoberfest. Let's go to Germany. I'm, Let's do it. Hey, look, look, I you, agree. You. I agree. But with especially y'all two drinking little sissy beers, do you think we could handle beer in Germany? Yeah, you're the one that drinks the bitch beer. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Do y'all, do y'all think we could really go to Germany? For Oktoberfest. Well, look, Oktoberfest is not just to be slammed. Oktoberfest is not just the beer. It's all the yeah, it's all the cavalcade of sauerkraut and sausages and like uh, it's German yeah, the gas we're gonna have the gas. Oh, God. <laughs> the yeah. girls are gonna make us share a hotel room while they share one of their own. <laughs> does, uh, another question: Does uh, Sparkin the Deutsch? No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I was gonna say because I don't know a lick of German. So. <laughs> but no. Oh, we uh, look with, within the next five years. Let's at least start looking into it and seeing how much it would cost to take a week trip to Germany. I, I don't mind at all. And you know what they say that that traveling and of that nature is a lot more inexpensive than it is going to like theme parks and stuff. For example, like I, I go to Disney World every year. It would be cheaper for my family to probably go to Germany for a week and and or Japan for a week than it would be for us to drive down to Orlando and, and spend a week at Disney. So I, I mean I agree hundred percent. I mean I think it would be cheaper than our normal vacation anyhow. We could take a Norwegian cruise that goes through Europe. We can do it. Look, let's make this one happen for Cody, but then like I said, five to six years. Let's uh, start looking at at cost. Well, so, okay, so I have to. Uh, y'all okay with my parents coming? Because I was gonna bring them. 
I mean, I no, just, no, if this is a, a bucket list where it's just a family thing, that's cool. But we also need, like, I, I get that. I understand. I don't want to impede on your thing. And by the way, I'm cool with your parents. I'm not saying I'm not. But if you were planning this as a family trip thing you want to go on. Oh, man, that'd be I'm right not, there drinking with us. <laughs> I mean, it would be, it'd be awesome, man. I want, I want to travel. I want to go to England. I want to go somewhere like Germany for Oktoberfest. And I want to see, I want to see Australia. Death killing, mutilating spiders to be damned. Oh, you got to bring a flamethrower with you. And yeah. every, every single snake you come across is the deadliest snake in the world. Oh, and, accurate. Uh, <laughs> uh, the last thing I had was, uh, I like the cold, so I would love to go to Alaska and sightsee up there. And if we ever get to it, I would like to go to Antarctica. Would you want to see there's nothing think, I there? I don't think there's a whole lot to do there right now, <laughs> other than just stand there in the cold I'll, and look. I'll at the meet coins. you halfway. I can deal with the cold. There is one thing on my bucket list that I just thought of another one. It's but it's a sight that I want to see with my own eyes, and I I believe you can northern see it lights. really good from Alaska. I want to see the Northern Lights yes, in that person. Would be really cool to see. I would so, lay in the snow. I, I would I would go with you to Alaska just to see the northern lights. And skinny dip. And Sarah Palin. But here's the question. Are we gonna go during 30 days of night or 30 days of light? Both. Yeah, I think we can meet in the middle. I <laughs> uh, say so you still want a daytime and a nighttime? I want to experience something you can't experience here. I either want to be there when, like, the sun never comes up or the sun never goes down. Hey, Alan, there's going to be, like, 40 feet of snow. That's something you can experience, not here. Yeah. <laughs> but then I also want to sneak on one of them crab boats and just see if I could make it. Shit. <laughs> the crabs are bigger than you are. <laughs> 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 Look, I watched, like, the first four seasons of Deadliest Catch. I know what I'm doing. Yeah, them guys, them guys did too. <laughs> Man, nice. look, they make like a year's salary for like three weeks worth of work. I can, I can tough it out yeah, for three weeks. Have, they also average about one a ship that falls off the boat and you never see them again. Well, that's why we use tie downs. It's worth the risk. I might be dangling off the side of the ship. But the not waves are, are taller than the boat. <laughs> you just see them <laughs> over there going like, damn. <laughs> Did we have anything uh, else on the uh, bucket list topic? No. All hey, right. so the band you was talking about that doesn't exist. Yes. To kind of back up. I the, didn't give uh, you their name, did I? They're called the Relentless. You did. Oh. So how about, oh, I wonder if I can pull this out of my butt. Uh, no, nah, I can't remember. The band on Freaky Friday with Lindsay Lohan. What about them? We're a pretty good band. There, oh, wasn't, en there wasn't enough music in the movie. You heard like little 30 second clips. Like this movie is like a two hour movie. It revolves, there's like several full performances you get to see. I like I I enjoy that about the movie too, because they're a band because a band somewhere musicians all came together and recorded an album. There are like three or four full scenes where you get to see full songs performed as part of the movie. It's really Calm cool. Calm down, Alan. I'm not putting your I'm not putting your fake band down. No, I'm, I'm saying to... you were comparing <laughs> it just, to another I just band. To bring up. Lindsay Lohan and how hot she was in Freaky Friday. I mean, I agree. And I mean, and they're and they're. I don't think their bass player used to pick. <laughs> I don't know. They probably did. It probably did. <laughs> it was the goth girl, well, goth chick girl. Okay. <laughs> All right, Cody. Why don't you round us out this evening and tell us a little bit about? your trip to, a little more about your trip to indiana as a whole oh my goodness so it was uh this was a really long weekend we'd we planned to go up there uh to fort wayne indiana it's gonna 
the goal was to go to, was to try to, I worked all day Friday and I was going to drive. It's about eight hours to Fort Wayne from my house. I was going to try to drive three or four hours, get a hotel, stay the night and get up, drive in the next morning, Saturday morning, go to Sweetwater, uh, get a guitar and then stay the night in Fort Wayne and drive eight hours Sunday. Well, it didn't really work out that way. <laughs> <laughs> so I get up at four in the morning, like I do every morning, to go to work and uh, work all day, get off at 3.30, get home about 4.30. And uh, by the time I got everything together and got on the road, it was about 5.30 or so. But I'd go to uh, I'd drive straight on through to Bowling Green, Kentucky, which is about three hours. And uh, we stop and we eat dinner at Chewy's, which was my first experience eating Chewy's. How it was, was really it? good. It's delicious. It's I got the uh, I got the steak burrito with the boom boom sauce. Like it. Yes, with it was boom very boom. spicy, but it was. Yeah, good. But it's very good. Very good. They got the melted Monterey Jack cheese or something or uh, pepper Jack cheese on the steak and inside the burrito. Oh God! Mm. So. That you can get that and substitute the sauce for the jalapeno ranch that they have. Yeah, did oh, you get any? God. Did you have the jalapeno ranch sauce that you dipped the tortilla chips in? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> That'll make your yeah. dick hard right there. Oh, triple date. <laughs> so, triple date chewies? so they brought in they brought in the uh, that sauce and the salsa, and I had when we got there, I went straight to the bathroom because I had to pee. <laughs> And when I came back, we had that, and I thought, I've never ate there before. I thought, well, this must be their version of a cheese dip or something. So I thought my <laughs> wife had ordered cheese dip, you know. Louisiana, of course, I once I tasted, I figured out it wasn't cheese dip. But I still thought she had ordered it. And we went through a basket of chips, and she's like, we, sh- we should have got cheese dip. And I was like, hell, I thought you, I thought you ordered it. <laughs> so anyway, we by the time we got the cheese dip, we ate like, or four you know chips of that and we were so stuffed full of chips and it was a waste of money to get the cheese dip <laughs> <laughs> we didn't eat hardly any of it but the the food was really good so if you, if you get a chance if you like mexican food and you go to a chewy's or if you see a chewy's you should try it it's pretty good it and uh, alan and steven actually recommended it anyway so back to the story after wait i was like well let's just go ahead and get a room stay the night and we'll just drive the other five hours tomorrow because we were both pretty tired well we start going around trying to find hotels and everywhere is booked up so we go to the next exit everywhere's booked up crap what is going on and uh we, we actually asked a couple of them and they're like well the only thing we can guess is it's spring break and uh also in bowling green there was like some kind of race what NASCAR? It was like a, a Formula One or something kind of race uh, that weekend. So gotcha. all those are booked. So then we're like, well, let's go to Louisville, which was an, an hour, an hour away, and let's we'll see what we can find up there. Everything was booked in Louisville. God. Now, now, granted, we didn't go to the, we didn't go look at like the, the Econo Lodge or the. The the one the shady looking places the right you know, we have the hourly rates I did we're like <laughs> eh, you know, we were just checking the comfort suites and the Holiday Inn you know or whatever just uh, name brand stuff so finally we're like at, at this point we're like well I guess I'm like, hell I guess we'll just drive on in now, <laughs> and remember now I've been up since four. <laughs> And at this point, when we're in Louisville, it is probably close to midnight when we're in Louisville. <laughs> so we just so we just keep on going. And uh I actually my wife starts driving and I I take like a forty minute nap and she wakes me up, she's tired. 
<laughs> she's dozing. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> so we uh so we swap back and we keep driving and uh actually we get to uh Indianapolis and we're going around the uh going through it and there's a lot of speed traps in Indianapolis on the interstate. Like they get it goes down to fifty five going through there. And uh we're just cruising along and I pass this car and uh he's in the middle lane, I'm in the left lane. I pass him, I get back over, well he speeds up. So I'm trying to get out of his way. I'm like, like I don't know which way to go. I'm speeding back up. Well, then they turn the lights on. It's a damn cop. So I get, <laughs> so I get, I get pulled over. God, this night sucks. And this is uh, at this point, it's like two in the morning, our time, God, uh, Central yeah. Time. And uh, luckily, only he just gave me a warning. Uh, he was actually really nice. Um. So then we, we get back on the road and my wife kept saying, let's just stop at a truck stop or the rest area and just sleep. And I'm like, at this point, I'm like, hell no. Like I'm so mad. We're fuck, we're driving all the way to Fort Wayne and <laughs> we can't get a hotel room there. We'll sleep. But I, I'm not stopping now. This is, I this I've had it. So we drove all the way through. We got to uh, Fort Wayne at four o'clock in the morning. So it, we finally, it was, I was up over 24 hours by the time we finally got a hotel room and stayed the night. And so it was five o'clock there, their Eastern time. So we, we go to check in and they're like, oh, well, the day rate hasn't started yet. So we'll technically have to charge you for both nights. We were going to stay Saturday night too. I'm like, I don't give a shit. Just give me the room. <laughs> I want to go to bed. <laughs> like, I'm good with that. I mean, I was, you know, planning on paying for two rooms anyway, or two to two to two nights. So, uh, I get the room. We go up there and we sleep for about four hours or so, and we get up and get ready and um, went and ate. Well, no, we, we, uh, slept through breakfast. <laughs> so we, when we got up, we, we caught an 11 o'clock lunch at, um, uh, uh, what kind of barbecue, what kind of barbecue place there in the, by, by the small, it was okay. Anyways, then we go to Sweetwater and that was the whole reason for the trip. Uh, we're going to find a guitar and, uh, a new guitar and, uh, I I love going to Sweetwater. It's uh it's such a cool place. The the uh, arcade they have an arcade for the for the uh, employees kids. Mm-hmm. So if you don't have if you if you if you work there and you don't have a babysitter, you can bring your kids to work and they have someone. They have a baby like a daycare there. That's awesome. To take care of your that's, kids. that's awesome. That's cool. And they, an arcade is free. Like every which it's not a bunch of an arcade, but they got three or four Pac-Man games, you know, that's free and uh, the old school uh, style. And uh, they got like ski ball and foosball table, a pool table. Me and my wife played ping pong for a little while <laughs> while we were there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just stuff like that. And I say it's, it's a really cool place. They got their own uh, urgent care there. For their employees, a salon you can go in there and get your hair cut while you're at work. In a music store, <laughs> in, in a music That's... store. This place is huge. It's That's got uh, two different uh, like cafes in there. You can go eat. Um, yeah, it's 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 cool. It's got four four uh, fully full to do studios you can rent time to go in there and record like professionally record if you want to um that's where we're gonna do our first time gentlemen mm. yep that's it <laughs> so but if you actually go once you go into the music store they got they got pianos all the way on the far end just everywhere i sent out a picture of one of them uh, yeah 95 thousand dollar <laughs> piano Yep, ninety five thousand. And actually, the 
the first time I went, they had a they had a hundred thousand dollar piano there. Oh, God. And it was probably um it was it was a lot bigger than the one I sent you, Alan. Right. Uh yeah, this place and it played cross. itself like you could put in whatever song you wanted and the keys would go down like it would actually play the song they've like got it, a whole it, I mean, theater it's one like you would see in a hotel or a like somebody who's got more money than they know what to do with <laughs> that doesn't right. play piano it would be in their house <laughs> yeah, a decoration <laughs> yeah exactly a hundred thousand dollar decoration <laughs> can you play nope <laughs> Of course, you go into the uh, the electric guitar room and you can't hear yourself thinking there. I get all the, it always amazes me the guitar players, and I'm one of them. But there's all kind, you know, there's all different kinds. I know Alan knows what I'm talking about. So he works yeah. at Guitar Center. You got the guy over there; he's barely got his sound up where he can just barely hear himself, which is normally me. And then they got the guy over here that's just cranked up drowning everybody out and all he's playing is smoke on the water well this guy was playing uh this guy was actually pretty decent but he was playing a lot of um finger tapping and uh he was shredding a lot i was like god i, I had to get out of there it was driving me crazy <laughs> it's so freaking loud in there and i go in the bass room with and uh it's kind of a small room but they don't sell There's picks a lot of bases there. in there. Huh? They don't sell picks in there, do they? <laughs> Not in the base room. <laughs> you got to get them on the other wall. <laughs> <laughs> but then I finally get into the acoustic room, which is where I'm where, where I was headed and spent probably I don't know, an hour and a half or so maybe in there and um uh, played several different guitars. And I finally had it narrowed down to a, a a Taylor and a Guild guitar. <laughs> and the so, I mean, he, uh, for people that don't know, there's there's four, there's three or four really big names in acoustic guitars. You got Martin, Gibson, Taylor, and. I don't know, I might throw Breed Love in there or something like or Takamini, one of those two in there. Right. So Guild is not one of them. <laughs> but this Guild guitar, which was actually, I think, a couple hundred dollars uh more than the Taylor I was looking at. Um so they had some high end stuff for Guild. It sounded so freaking good. And I was like I was looking at my wife, and I'm like Am I really gonna pick a guild <laughs> over a tailor? Like, is this about to happen? Well, finally, finally, I get to looking, and it doesn't have a strap holder on the neck. I would have had to tie the tie it to the headstock uh, to the headstock, and all that, or, or had one installed. And I was like, so. Whew. Well, that made my that made my decision easy. <laughs> He's like, it'd have been really. I'm like, I am way too much of a stuck up uh, guitar player to have chosen a Guild over a Taylor. <laughs> so, with well, that being said, here is my new baby. It's pretty. It's a. I like it. Well, I got this clip on tuner on here. But it is a Taylor. It's the American Dream series. It's pretty. It's very pretty. Yep. I like it. It's my uh it's my second American uh American made guitar I have now. And uh the only thing that I miss on it is my other acoustic has the built in tuner. And this one don't. So every time I get it yeah. out I'm like, uh, oh, crap. But luckily, I have the clip-on tuner, so it makes quick work of that. But So that was successful. I was glad to get it. And uh, I actually ended up getting a lot of free stuff. I, I got to talking to the guys up there, and they're like, you drove eight hours to come up here? Yeah, <laughs> I was like, going to ask understand. you, 
Did uh, what? Did they think you were crazy or impressed that you drove from Alabama to Indiana to buy a guitar? I think they were more. Uh, they probably thought I was more crazy than they were impressed. <laughs> but they just don't get it. I mean, they like if Alan can tell you they they can make two guitars the exact same way, the exact same wood, the exact same time exact same conditions and they do not play the same right they don't sound the same every guitar is different so if you want if you're gonna pay the money that i paid for this guitar you want to get what you you want to know what you're getting so that's the reason i went up there and uh because i i'd hate to pay that order it online get it in and not like it that would, that's just that'd be horrible and plus, me and my wife like it up there, so it it's a it's a fun trip. It's normally a a pretty leisurely trip. Eight hours isn't right. that bad driving, but uh, this this trip made it pretty long. But then yeah. we went to a uh, outlet mall afterwards, so my wife could do something fun. <laughs> Bless her heart, my wife is a she is a saint. She's my biggest fan. And I love her to death. She sat in that music store with me for three or four hours, <laughs> sat with me in that room for an hour and a half while I played all these guitars. Uh, she, she's great. So I went, so then we go to this mall and they have this painting store and, uh, it's actually pretty neat. You go in, they got all these different things made out of plaster and, uh, that they actually make themselves there. And so she picked out the mocking Jay uh, from the hunger games, which is right here. And she painted and they, they give you the paint and everything right in there. Uh, you can sit in there and paint like they had uh, like women's groups in there painting. They had like a bachelorette party. They had families in there with kids painting. It was just, it was just, you make an hour of it or whatever. And uh, it's a pretty cool store. They shine it up for you. So that's it right there she did that's cool while she was painting i went i was really supportive and i went next door to books a million i mean barnes and noble and and shopped <laughs> while she painted bye. Bye. So bye. I, I am a piece of crap i did not hang in there and watch her paint like she watched me play guitar now <laughs> I went next door and looked at books <laughs> now by shop do you mean you went and pooped it in books a million your store that Every time you go in it, you have to take a poo. It is books of me, but I was in Barnes and Noble. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, oh, but they did have a store across the way. It was a comic store, and it had all kind of stuff in it. It was cool. I, I've I've never seen a store quite like this. Um, they don't really have any around here where I live, so they had all the comics. Um, it kind of looked like on, um, big bang, big bang theory yeah. when they, the store they went to, how they're just, they're kind of filed in like these open, uh, crates, I guess. Right. And they're like broke up by, by, uh, you know, X-Men, Spider-Man, whatever. And you, you just flip through them and look at them and it was cool. <laughs> Then they had uh, all kinds of any kind of game you could think of, like, you know, World of Warcraft or Axis and Allies or, you know, all those kind of board games and stuff. Puzzles. Uh, I, in fact, I bought us a puzzle for us to take to Orlando with us. Um, it's the second level on the original Super Mario Brothers game where it's where it's underground. Right. And it's got like the blue background and the, the bricks on top and, and the, That's cool. the three, uh, pipes. I should have brought it in here. It's in the living room, but, uh, it's like a thousand piece puzzle of that. So we're going to put that together on our vacation. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> That's it. So it was fun. And then we, uh, we tried to find something to eat for dinner and we ended up stopping at this place called chops. And, um, this was the most expensive meal <laughs> we have had as a couple. It was very expensive, but I mean, you know, we got stimulus and 
taxes back and all this crap. So it wasn't no, it was worth it. It was really good. Right. I got the surf and turf. So I had a, I had a filet and a lobster tail. That's oh, cool. It was, it was so good. It's funny, you know, it says market price on the, on the menu. And when I get my check, I look at it. I'm like, if I knew it was that much, I never would have ordered it ever. Right. <laughs> but I'm glad that it wasn't on there because it was it was good. And I and I and I wouldn't have enjoyed. I wouldn't have got to experience it if I'd have saw the price. Yeah. So, right. Or you probably would have been like, nah, I'm not getting that. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so it, it was good. And then so we went to, uh, got back to the room and we got up the next morning about four or so and uh started heading back uh so it was a fun trip we we had a good time we didn't get we didn't get much rest at all in fact on the way home uh, we looked we got our invoice from the hotel and we liked like five minutes of of being at the hotel for 24 hours all right and they Dang. they ended up only charging us for one night yeah, uh, there I you left go. A really good review. <laughs> Help pay for that. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So that was that was nice of them. But nice. yes, yeah, so I got my guitar. I'm I'm real excited. Um, I should be set for a while, but y'all know me. I'll be I'll be on the hunt again soon. <laughs> but always. But I I need to pay this one off first though. Yeah. It's like I've told my wife I don't know how many times that I'm done adding to my computer rig, but uh <laughs> Well, so I mean... here's so here's the dilemma and here's my new excuse. I wanted a hard case with the with this guitar because it only it comes with a it says it comes with a soft shell case. So we we got a uh got a hard case for it. And then when I get the hard when I get the um uh, the soft shell, it's like a, it's a, it's a hybrid shell. So it's, it's soft, but it, it's, it's still rigid. It's still very rigid. Yeah. Like I have to still, I still have to lay it down and z- unzip it all the way to open it. Just like I gotcha. would have to with my, uh, heart, heart shell case. So it's almost like they got, um, little plastic inserts in it that keep it firm. Yeah, I'm not. I'm. I'm really not sure how they pulled that off. But so I'm actually keeping my Taylor in the Taylor case because it's it's so it's such a nice case. So now I've got my other guitar in the hard shell I just bought. <laughs> so now I've got an extra case that I need to put something in. There you go. Team. Mm. Nice. I'm thinking twelve string. That's what. That's what <laughs> I'm thinking. Probably something cheap though. A couple hundred dollar twelve string. Yeah. <laughs> No, it was oh. a fun trip though. Fun stuff. All right, we're we're we got off on a few uh, t- tangents earlier in the night, so uh, we are running a little long. We'll go ahead and call it there. We once again, we want to remind everybody. Uh, we're we're glad you're watching us. Just leave a comment below. Say hi. Say hello. Say I watched. Say I saw Alan's cheesy ass in outro where he asked me to comment. Uh, give us a thumbs up. Share it with your your buddies, your friends. Let them know what's going on. Uh, once again, just over a month, we're going to see live music. Still Panthers coming to Birmingham. If you're going to be at the show, let us know. Come say hi. Uh, and that, we'll wrap this up. Y'all got anything else to say? Thank y'all for watching. Make sure you comment. Let us know what you want to hear. Yep. Thanks for watching. Uh, you know, we, we see our numbers kind of going down. So y'all let us know what, what's, what's holding you back. What, what do y'all want to hear us talk about? Give us some ideas. Let's get, Absolutely. Let's get it. And, uh, if you got any ideas for another challenge for us to do, or one we haven't mentioned, you can let us know that too. Yeah. If you want to see us skydive, if you if y'all want us to, y'all want to see us throw Steven out the plane. <laughs> we, I tell you what, if we if you if we can get to a hundred subscribers, we will consider throwing Steven out of a plane. Yes, hundred subscribers. We need sixty-one people. 
And just think, we'll be 400 away from Steven showing his butthole. <laughs> I think those are, those are just kind of backwards. I think you should show it at 100 and get pushed out of the plane at 500. <laughs> like you're getting the, you're getting the crap into the deal. No pun right. intended. <laughs> All right, everybody. Y'all have a good week. Thank you for joining us. Peace out. Rock on, guys.